Welcome to The Wrinkled Engineer. So I had a problem when I did my kitchen cabinets, specifically this, this dish drawer. Uh, the drawer front had an issue. This is the old drawer front. Um, and last week I decided to fix that issue. So the issue I had is that the bottom side of this drawer front started to curve and bow. And I made it out of two pieces. Um, the same piece, wide, wide piece of ash, and I probably should have ripped these in half and made it out of four pieces. Uh, making it out of these two pieces was just asking for it to bow like this. So I went ahead and knocked this out in, in one day, and uh, I actually think the new drawer looks better. It's made out of one piece of ash that's like, it was like five, six inches wide, and so it's three plies and it's now pretty flat and pretty straight. So here's the build video for this cabinet drawer front. We start the milling process by cutting the boards into three pieces, a little longer than the finished drawer front is going to be. We move on to the table saw. You'll want to use a low tooth count blade that's made for ripping. Boards are ripped so that the combined width of the three boards is, you know, an inch or two larger than the finished drawer front. All right, so I've got my edging bit on here that will help align them vertically with one another with the plies. This is a very tedious process because it's it's mirrored. You've got to get it dead center on the center of your board. So the best way to do that is to just have something the same thickness and run it through and run it through and run it through and you know get to where you have it lined up. To help minimize curling of the drawer front, I'll alternate the directions of the grain, so this just means the faces are flipped. Since this comes from the same piece of wood, the grain is consistent, we're just going to flip front face, back face, front face on the adjacent plies of this drawer front. It's very important to mark your edges and keep track of which face is supposed to be down when you apply this edging. Since it is a mirror, you have to alternate adjacent plies, otherwise they won't mate together properly. distracted and my wife decided uh, because her parents were in town and her fa my father-in-law pulled a bunch of weeds in a planter that we needed to plant it so they're out there planting flowers but I had to go run to the garden store but that works out well because the glue actually causes this joint to swell so you want to give it some time to dry out otherwise as you sand it and then it contracts when it dries you'll get a little bit of a dip I think I've got it pretty dry um, I must have, these either must be a little bit thicker than my test pieces or the center board had a little bit of wobble when I was going through the, the router table. So I've got a little bit more of a gap than I would like, but I'm, I'm really impressed with, it's a pretty flat slab, so hopefully it will stay that way as I work it.
As you can see, the orbital sander is just taking too long, so I switched over to the belt sander. It's got to be careful with the belt sander. They're just aggressive by nature. It's very easy to gouge or, or mar the wood with with a belt. So I, I stuck with a 120 grit belt. Uh, 80 is just a little too aggressive. I then cleaned up the surface back on the orbital sanders. So I used a 180 grit disc. I'm gonna finish with 220 grit. Now that the surface is sanded flat, it's time to get the correct cut size of the existing drawer. So we cut it to width, making sure to match as closely as possible to the original drawer front, and then we cut it to length, same thing, trying to match those dimensions precisely. A few passes on the, a quarter round router bit gives us the same profile as the original drawer front. I did some final cleanup and sanding and sanded the edges in the profile. I used contour pads to help conform the sandpaper to a closer shape of that edge profile. I like using sanding sealer to help raise the grain, but even just misting water over the surface and wiping that down will help that grain raise. Once it's dry, just a light sanding to knock the, the grain back down and then a nice water-based polyurethane to finish and coat it. After the polyurethane dries, the penultimate step was to match drill the holes for the handle. I accomplished this by clamping the old drawer front onto the new one and just through drilled that as a template. And now it's time to install. These drawer front clamps are very handy, giving you micro adjustment of the location of the drawer front, and then it holds it in place while you attach the screws from the back. We wanna make sure that the drawer front is centered and lines up with the adjacent panels. And there, the new drawer is complete, installed, and looks great. Thanks for joining the Wrinkled Engineer. Have a good one. <laughs>